Good morning. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the marvel of live plants. I love them. Um, live plants do a bunch of different things, and uh, how you would have them in your pond, of course, is uh, variable. You could, uh, well, let me explain. Live plants. You don't want just any old plant, and some plants are floaters, some plants are drifters, and some plants are, are potted. An example of a drifter would be something like an acris or kabamba. They will throw down roots eventually, but a lot of times people just throw an armload of those into the pond. Uh, again, anacris and kabamba. Then there's floaters like uh, hyacinths and water lettuce. They're awesome. And then there's, uh, I like that. And then there's uh, planted ones. I like water celery. It's aggressive, uh, grows fast, and it takes up a lot of nitrogen. And then there's hyacinths and iris, which are very invasive and can put roots down that you'll never pull. I still like them, but they're pretty aggressive. Um, I'm not a real plant guy. I don't know all the plants. Um, cat, uh, there's cattails, which I really liked in my pond. I have a gravel bottom pond uh, that I enjoy the most. And uh, because you can get so much stuff like snakes and frogs and birds and all kinds of stuff in those ponds, it's awesome. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, there are a bunch of different kinds of plants. Well, all of them are, are nitrogen users. And uh, that may be their probably their best thing is uh, using nitrate. That nitrate is what controls um, string algae. Uh, by removing nitrate, you can cut down on the string algae in green water. Well, what removes nitrate? Water changes for plants. So to a beginner, I think that the uh, plants are an excellent, uh, excellent addition to the pond. So, and let me tell you three other reasons why plants are so great. Um, Plants will remove nitrates, as I mentioned to you before. Removing nitrates is a competitive thing with algae, and so you'll see algae uh, disappear. However, plants also remove other toxins. They don't really know exactly how they do that, but they think it's through the roots, and uh, they'll pull up. They won't pull up every heavy metal and everything. And it's not to say your pond can't be intoxicated if somebody threw a whole box of uh, borax in there, but. Uh, some of the impurities in water, especially down in Florida and that sort of thing, where they pull them out of peat bogs, uh, plants can remove a lot of the toxins that might be in there. I wouldn't use them for that. It's just a side benefit. Another thing about plants. They have plant agglutinins. Plant agglutinins basically are sticky proteins that are, that are elaborated by the plant, usually through the root system or the uh, wherever the roots join the plant. And those sticky agglutinins, basically what they do is they go out through the water and they stick to stuff. Um, organic molecules, bacteria, etc. And when they stick to stuff, it coagulates them down. So basically, if you think about it, the plant is a hunter. And uh, so the plant basically is uh, using uh, a technique that, like the plant agglutinins are like arrows. So the hunter basically is shooting its prey drags it down so it can get it, and that's exactly what plant agglutinins do. Well, to me and you, we don't really care about the plant agglutinins and what it does for the um, plant. What we care about is the, the, the plant agglutinins drop all the things that cause water to be cloudy, which makes our water clear. So plants can clarify green water, and plants can uh, secrete agglutinins, which bring out the uh, haze stuff. The only thing the haze, uh, the only haze that it won't reduce is uh, mineral hazes like calcium and that sort of thing in a new pond of mud. Uh, plants, not so good. In fact, plants get smothered by uh, suspended mud. So, um, live plants do a lot of things, reducing nitrate, reducing uh, other toxins, and plant agglutinins. One more thing that plants do, and that is phyllodina. Phyllodina is a little organism that lives all over plants, and um, the phyllodina is a little one-celled organism has a little mouth on it, and all it does is it takes a little drink of water, and then it uses uh, the water for nutrition. It takes bacteria and other organic molecules out for its own nutrition, and then it spits the water out. It's like a sponge. And um, basically, uh, phyllodina is very valuable. In fact, they're, uh, they're kind of thinking that in stable environments, they're thinking that by biopsying how much phyllodina is on plants and in the environment, that would indicate the health of the system. Uh, looking at that, I think in the Great Lakes region, they're uh, basically saying like if they went to the piers and stuff like that, if they biopsy and there was tons of phyllodina, then it would mean that there's uh, not as much poisons and toxins in the water that would kill the phyllodina. So they're saying that if there's a lot of phyllodina, the water system is healthy. And I'm not sure how that works. I think that maybe if there's a ton of phyllodina, they make the water system healthier, not necessarily the other way around. But I'm not working on the Great Lakes. Hmm, I won't. Um, 
So plants do a lot of cool things. And then you might say, hmm, how can I have plants in my pond? I have a lot of koi. Well, if you have a lot of plants, you can have koi and plants together because the plants all distribute the attacks of the koi. And the other thing is that koi, if they're given pelleted food, they don't want to work as hard as they'd have to for plants. The pelleted food is so much easier. So if they're full on pelleted food, chances are they're going to leave the plants alone. But what happens is the guy with the koi pond, he'll go and he'll put uh, a plant in with his koi and the koi will go over and go, what's this, what's this? And they don't have thumbs, so they'll explore it with their mouths and they'll tear it up. So uh, I think the secret to getting into plants would be to give it something to root in, like a bog, uh, and put a bunch in there so that the, uh, the koi don't, you know, attack all the one thing. And, uh, well, anyway, if you don't want your koi and plants together, that's fine. Just get a great big vat, like a 300-gallon Rubbermaid stock trough. You can get them at Craigslist for cheap. You can buy them off uh, feed stores and buy them off dealers. You do not want to have to fly them anywhere or transport them because that's expensive. But uh, you'd get that stock tank, and then you'd gradually pump your water through the stock tank with plants in it. And then it would return, perhaps by gravity, to the pond. And then, so all your water's constantly going through this uh, water purification system that's based on vegetation. So that's veggie filtration. Or you could have a pond built that has gravel in it and put plants in there. That works damn good. Or you could put a bog. Bogs basically are just a little mini pond with gravel in them. And you put the plants in there, and the same thing basically again is the water flows through the bog and the plants do their thing, but the koi don't have access to the bog, so they don't eat your plants. So that's pretty much it. Uh, one more card. It's blank. <laughs> I fooled you. Um, that's all I had to say about plants for the beginner. You know what I'll do? See, what happens is YouTube truncates my videos all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to let you read that for a couple minutes, and then I'm going to cut off the video uh, thing. I don't know why, but every time uh, I make a video, the last couple of seconds go uh, get truncated off. I, and uh, So what I do is I put a bunch of junk at the end, usually about an extra minute of uselessness. Uh, and then when they cut that off, uh, it doesn't matter because the, owner or the uh, viewer doesn't even know that that disappeared. And I thought maybe I could let you listen to a little bit of music, too. Some good music, I hope. This music is no good. Wonder how that is. Probably crazy tinny. Earthquake! Oh my god, it's an earthquake. Do you believe that? Yeah, I'll bet you wish you had turned off your computer about a minute ago. You don't have to listen to this cheesy music and look at my sign. Hey, I know what else you can do. Uh, you can look at my keyboard, I think. Keyboard! Me! My mouse! This is like the typical YouTube video, if you really think about it. These little teenagers get on here and they just put stupid video up that means nothing. Like I said, I'm sorry I have to add this last minute. You probably won't even see it, so. Alright, that's probably enough sh shenanigans. They'll truncate all this, you won't even see it anyhow. I don't know why they do that. Alright, well thanks a lot. Appreciate your kind attention. And I'll see you tomorrow.